Hello everyone, this is Renan from Developer Soapbox, and today I'm going to show you how to access your Microsoft Access Database using Java, specifically Spring Boot. And you might be asking, why would you do that? Why would you use Microsoft Access as your database for something as robust as a Java or Spring Boot project? But I'll actually argue that there's a use case for everything. So for example, you might actually be transitioning out of a Microsoft Access Database, but still have to support the existing functionality. In which case, whenever you're finished transitioning all your objects outside of the Microsoft Access database, such as your forms and reports and so on, you can essentially just point your new application to the new database. So let's get started. Um, as you can see here, I just have a very basic Microsoft Access database. I have one table named customers, and right now I just have one record with John Smith. So let's go ahead and generate our Spring Boot project. Um, I'm just going to go into start.spring.io. You can also use a plugin if your IDE or code editor has one. Okay, so I'm just going to do a Maven project. It is Java. I'm just going to use a default version. Go ahead and put in your group and artifact names. And then as far as dependencies, all we're going to need for this project is JDBC API. Go ahead and do that and generate project. Once a project has been generated, I'm just going to go into my downloads folder. And for the sake of this project, I'm just going to unzip it right into downloads. Um, obviously, for your project, you're going to move it somewhere else into a projects folder. But let me just work within downloads. Okay. So here's my project. I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code and open that folder. There we go. So the way that Java is going to connect to the Access Database is actually through JDBC. So there's a great library out there named You Can Access, and that's what we're going to be using. So if we go into our POM file, let's go ahead and add that dependency. So you're just going to add it right here after the last dependency and before the dependencies end tag. And I already have it copied, so I'm just going to paste it. And it's group ID net.sf. You can access. Artifact ID is you can access. And the latest version as of right now is 4.0.4. .4. We'll go ahead and save that. Uh, next step is go into our application properties file, which is in source, main, resources, application.properties. And this is where we're going to specify the JDBC URL, essentially the connection information. So the application knows where the database is stored. So I also have that information copied. I'm just going to paste it to save you guys some time. So the two properties we're going to be using is spring.datasource.url, and that's JDBC colon you can access colon slash slash, and then the location of your access database, the full path, right? So in my case, my database is stored in C users my username, developer soapbox, and my desktop, and the name of the file is mydatabase.accdb. Okay, you also want to specify some options here right after the name. So use semicolon and then open exclusive equals false, and then semicolon ignore case equals true. Okay, after that, do spring.data source and drive class name, and that's just telling the application, what, what's the JDBC driver you're going to be using, right? And this is what we're going to be using, net.youcanaccess.jdbc.youcanaccess. So that's what's really awesome about Spring Boot. We're essentially done with our configuration, and we can go ahead and get started coding. So let's go into our application class, which is where our logic is going to live. So go into main, and that should be the only class in there. In my case, it's demo application.java. Uh, your name will be different depending on what uh, project or artifact ID you use. Okay, and let's go ahead and make this class implement command line runner. And that essentially converts our application into a command line application. So let's go ahead and add the unimplemented methods for this interface. And that will add the run method, which is where you're going to put your, your logic. And since we're using JDBC for a project, I'm going to use a Spring uh, class named JDBC template, um, which is essentially a, a really nice utility wrapper around vanilla JDBC. 
So let's go ahead and add that. And I'm going to auto wire it. And because this is Spring Boot, what it's going to do is um, it recognizes that this is a JDBC template, so it needs a JDBC configuration. It'll use the information in our application properties file to essentially um, populate all the necessary properties of the, this JDBC template so we can use it. And first thing we're going to do for our database is let's go ahead and add one record into that customer table. So I'm just going to use my JDBC template and we're going to use the update method, which there are several vari variations of this method, but we're just going to use um, just the one with the SQL, a straight SQL string. So let's go ahead and insert into customer first name, last name. And I'm just going to insert Jane Smith, for example. So let's go ahead and run this. In my case, I'm just going to use Maven Spring Boot Run. And if you're using Eclipse or another full-featured IDE, you can probably just run uh, or click the Run button uh, to execute the main method within the class. Okay. And there we go. So shutdown completed. So it executed my insert statement. So if you can go into our database and into our customer table, there we go. There's our record that we just inserted. As far as selecting records from the database, it, it is a little bit more complex. Um, so we do need to create an entity class for this. Uh, we're, we're not using Hibernate or anything like that, but we do need to create a POJO to map our record to. So let's go back into our project. And just, again, for the sake of your time, I've gone ahead and copied um, and pasted this. So I'm just creating a customer class. Just has two properties, first name and last name. Uh, I do have a constructor here that takes both just uh, to make it easier for my row mapper, which I'll show you shortly, and then getters and setters. And lastly, let's go ahead and add a query uh, that's essentially going to use a row mapper to map each one of our rows um, into our POJO that we just created, a new customer, and return it into a list of customers. So again, this is just JDBC template, a query method, and then you specify your select statement. Here I'm just doing select first name, last name from my customer table. And then second argument is a row mapper um, for type customer. And, and then within that row mapper, I have a map row method, which takes in a result set and the row num. And essentially here, we're for, this is doing for each record within your um, within your query. So for each record, it's going to return a new customer. And again, I'm using my, my constructor here. So for, it's returning a new customer, and it's just passing in the first name and last name for that customer. And then here, I'm just, uh, I'm just getting that customer list that, that I'm creating, and then using it for each to print, print out each one of the records. So let's go ahead and run that again. All right, almost there. All right, there we go. So ran it again. It, it did execute the insert again, since I do still have it here. So now we have two Jane Smiths, right? But there, there's, our, uh, there's our resorts right there. So thank you very much for your time watching this video. Um, I hope it was informational. Um, if you did like it, please go ahead and hit that like button. And if you'd like to receive a notification for any future videos that I create, please do hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much.